Okay, they say it all starts with an idea, so I might as well throw mine out there because while for me, this has been an idea that has been floating around the blank spaces of my mind for quite a while now, and with the recent releases of Terminator Zero over on Netflix, one of the best entries into a franchise that I'm sure many of its own fandom would have now classified as a dead or unimpactful franchise in our current Hollywood climate. Not to mention the trailer drop of the Lord of the Rings anime adaptation of the War Rohirrim set to release later on this year, and even the disappointing attempt of an isekai by Warner Brothers Japan in the Suicide Squad isekai over on HBO Max. It seems as if Hollywood has been starting to see the vision that I have seen. Seen what I've seen. I have seen my share. You have not seen what I have seen. And don't get me wrong, I'm not a full-on bloke, so I understand that while the quality of an anime adaptation overall, let's just take for example the two most recent anime adaptations that I just mentioned in Terminator Zero and the Suicide Squad Isekai, yeah. I understand that the quality and how the anime is received overall is based on a ton of different factors like experience behind the scenes, the investment and knowledge of the source material by the people involved, and most importantly, the size and simply how engaged the fanbase would be in regards to each individual IP in an anime style of content. And even with just this small sample size of these two examples, we've seen from the Suicide Squad Isekai and Terminator Zero how impactful those aspects are, and how they can sway and vary from each anime adaptation to anime adaptation, and how ultimately that impacts the future of this IP and this style of entertainment, and the engagement of not only from its initial targeted fanbase, but the casual side of the audience that finds themselves to be an ever-shrinking pawn in the drought of creativity Hollywood finds themselves in. But that's enough of the yapping, so let's just go ahead and get to the point of all of this. I believe that most Hollywood IPs should have anime adaptations, and to take it even a step further, much like with Terminator Zero, I believe that most Hollywood IPs, franchises that have found themselves in the sunken place of the desolate wasteland of Hollywood post-2020, can be saved and reborn with anime adaptations. To be quite frank, in a time of creatively bankrupt and dead-on-arrival Hollywood franchises that have the fan bases that are desperate for quality content of their favorite IPs, there is no better time for Hollywood to pivot in another direction of what could be a win-win in regards to the decaying and damn near non-existent audience-to-studio relationship that we find ourselves in. And with the arrival of some of the most mainstream anime in the game right now like Demon Slayer, JJK, and My Hero Academia to an extent, becoming household names over here in the West, even to some of the most casual of audience members, an anime adaptation not only provides a chance of redemption for some of our more forsaken IPs, franchises that have stumbled out of the gate or weren't even given their fair shake of the game, either due to restrictions of the time or the lack of investment of the people involved, and even for the IPs that were more than likely never even going to get a chance in the limelight at all. All I'm saying is that I believe that anime adaptations could provide some of the most down bad franchises and fan bases a chance at life. And because of that, I do have some ground rules, exclusions, and I guess some honorable mentions, because I made this list with integrity and with the hearts of the people, pretty much making me an international hero. Because from my point of view, it is pretty much a no-brainer to say that franchises such as Star Wars, Marvel, DC, Star Trek, Lord of the Rings, and yes, the Terminator franchise, could and should have successful adaptations if done right simply based on the size and sheer numbers of the fan base. And because of that, this is not a video about those kind of franchises. These franchises that are on this list are franchises that I believe not only need an anime adaptation in order to succeed, but IPs that I think would work best in an anime adaptation overall. And so while you could throw in some of the more popular and most well-known IPs in the honorable mentions if that makes you feel any better, I'll also be throwing in the Tomb Raider franchise, seeing how that's receiving a Netflix adaptation already set to release later on this year. The Matrix, seeing how while I believe this franchise is still definitely a little bro, compared to the Top of the Pyramid franchises, it still felt a little cheap to throw it on this list. But that is enough yapping. Obviously, I'm just going from worst to best. I guess this is also a good time to like, subscribe, and comment down below your ideas, because I know my bloke ass is definitely going to miss some peak ideas. Anyway... Yo, shout out to my mate for throwing out this suggestion. In a time where live action video game adaptations are all of the rage right now in Hollywood in regards to the big and the small screen, of course to, again, varying quality and respect to the source material as we just saw with the Borderlands adaptation. And well, look where that got them. 
but video game adaptations are some of the biggest hitters in the game right now in regards to actual buzz and actual quality with big hits even this year like the Fallout series, Arcane Season 2 set to release later on this year, and the anticipated release of Sonic 3. It's kind of crazy how a simple change in character design and an answer to fan hate could do all of this for your franchise. And no matter how you look at it, there's kind of no reason why a video game series on the level of craft and execution in regards to its character designs, character depth in general, interlooping plot narratives, the ability to create and play storylines wherever the creative might like, which I guess in a way just includes the world building, isn't on the same platform of success as these other franchises. And I believe that there's no really arguing the fact that an anime adaptation is the best way to translate that world into the best viewing experience for the fan base and a style of entertainment that I believe will do the most justice to the style and vibe of that world overall. Not to mention the insane attention to detail and time the animators would have in regards to the choreography and fight scenes. I honestly think the best comp that I would be able to give would be to imagine an anime just about the Anbu Ninja of the Hidden Leaf Village in Naruto. That would be epic, and that is the vision that I would have with an Assassin's Creed anime. I mean, this is kind of shameless, but if you have seen my Alien Romulus review, you would know that I am an extreme glazer of the Xenomorph, an alien that I believe to be the most badass and OP alien design the game has ever seen. I mean, I think Alien Romulus is one of the best movies of the year, easily, and clears my top five movies of all time for whatever that's worth. But everything about this idea just screams a combo made in heaven, and in reality, Terminator Zero really helped me see that vision. Now, there's definitely no mistaking that the Predator and the Alien franchises are not dead franchises. I just want to make myself clear on that. But what I will say is that I believe in regards to their potential, they are definitely limited franchises with nerfed characters. Let me explain. When I think about the Alien franchise or the Predator franchise overall, while yes, Ripley is an iconic character, I do not come to the series for the human characters overall. Much like how the Godzilla and Kong multiverse figured out the game and changed their franchise into a dumb, but also money-making machine, the Alien and Predator franchise could really afford to take some notes. What an anime setting and style does for this franchise is allow the ability for the badass alien designs that we know and love to actually be the badass alien designs that we know and love to their fullest extent, without the constrictions of budget or, say, extras in live-action format. Much like how in Terminator Zero, what an anime does for you is allow the Terminator to be a non-feeling, unstoppable killing machine, without the limitations of killing off main characters, but what you can do is just animate 30 people in a room that we as the audience have no feeling for, and well, I think you're starting to get my vision. I think it's about time that we took the training wheels off these two badass alien designs, and I think the best way to go about that is in an anime. Oh man, shout out Studio Trigger, cuz, whew, they're seeing the vision. But do I even have to explain how epic this one is? Now, I'm obviously not oblivious to the situation that the Transformers franchise finds themselves in, and it seems as if neither is Universal Studios. Again, let's just be frank here. We are in Gutterland. The Michael Bay franchise definitely had its run for the era of Hollywood that it was in, a very successful run that I might add. But after that, the solo outing of the Haley Steinfeld Bumblebee was actually pretty okay, but ran into a dead end. And this disconjointed animated franchise is not working. And while it seems as if the Transformers franchise newest release of Transformers 1 looks like it might be going back to the basics of being a more kid centralized IP, which I am not mad at, there is a media out there that can work with this franchise for say the older demographic of fans. And while sure, while it might seem cliche to just describe my vision for this combination as just a mech style anime on the intelligence level of a Code Geass, a narrative and engagement level of a Neon Genesis, and an animation level of say a Gundam Witch of Mercury, why not be cliche in this instance? What is the harm? Because in even saying that, I basically just gave myself an analogy for sugar, spice, and everything nice. Because the only problem I really find myself facing is that do we as an audience love mech anime because of the mech aspects or because of the characters inside of the mechs? But the Transformers are inherently characters within themselves 
and then I immediately just thought of Optimus' prime speech in the first Transformers movie, and immediately threw that thought out of the window. And while I think that the Transformers franchise is going in a pretty solid direction with Transformers 1, there is a vision out there for an anime, and obviously, Studio Trigger saw that. Oh yeah, baby, now we're getting to the juicy picks. I would be lying to you if I said that I have seen a lot of horror anime, and honestly, even while I'm thinking about it, I don't think that I have seen any horror anime whatsoever, and not because of lack thereof. Actually, maybe there is. I'm honestly not quite sure, and I guess that's because I never really searched out the genre or had a horror anime that was mainstream enough to reach the broader demographic that my anime algorithm could obviously pick up. Unless you include an anime like Monster that definitely had some horror elements, and even though I personally consider myself to be a four-year vet or a Jonin level ninja in the anime game, I honestly couldn't think of any horror icons that are more suitable for this style of media in order for the casual audience, and in this case, myself, to tip my toe in the water in the niche that is the horror anime genre. And while it might seem the hyper-realism of Pennywise the Clown in the IT live-action movies is a more engaging visual experience because, like I said, realism, and because of that, scary, at this point in our society as a whole, rather this statement is unfortunate or not, I believe that we as a casual audience are, for the majority, desensitized to a certain level of violence that is able to be achieved in a more neutered Hollywood style for a big screen adaptation. Not to mention the elephant in the room of the conundrum of how most child actors are pretty shit, and how you can kind of get around that with the animated style of voice acting. Again, like with the Xenomorph and with the Predator examples, this idea and entry is just coming from a mindset of having a style of media that allows Pennywise the Clown to be without limitations, and this is the horror icon that I think this idea works best for. Now this, oh yeah, this is a cinematic idea. And while obviously not my idea, seeing how anime-styled fan art in the art style of every studio known to man of The Legend of Zelda and its characters within has been around for decades, and I'm sure before I was even a sentient being, but with the crazy uptick in the fantasy anime games such as Free Ren, Dungeons & Delicious, or Bye Bye Earth, each with their own level of incredible qualities to them like the world building, animated fight sequences, relatable characters, and just absolutely incredible musical scores from all three and most of the fantasy anime that I've seen, a Legend of Zelda anime is kind of a hole in one in regards to how peak an IP and anime format could really become. And while I feel like I'm not really going to sell up this entry nearly as much as the others because it is not a new concept, just an untouched one, the fact that Hollywood has decided to go down the route of a live-action Legend of Zelda, in my opinion, will go down as one of the biggest blunders and nonsensical decisions in cinematic history. And I am down to eat my words on that. But what are you gonna do? I guess I'll just figure that out in like, two years or something. But that is all I got for you, that is the list. This was definitely a passion video of mine because I do genuinely believe that most Hollywood IPs like Star Wars, Terminator, Tomb Raider, Lord of the Rings, the Alien and Predator franchise, Transformers, I'm not going to list them all, you guys just heard them all on this video. But I do believe that most Hollywood IPs could thrive in an anime style of content, and while I think that some franchises are already starting to see that vision, I'm excited to see a possible future where there are more animated and more well-received projects like Terminator Zero, but only time will tell. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Oh yeah, definitely leave some of your recommendations down below because I know my empty head definitely missed some bangers. Also, I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description just in case you guys wanna go check that out. Again, I wanna thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Bye.